Does this happen to you? When you go into a fabric store to get a new pack of sewing machine needles and you get overwhelmed from all the different types, colors, and numbers, and you end up leaving frustrated. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the sewing machine needle basics, and I'm gonna debunk a few misinformed rumors that are floating around here on YouTube. Coming up next. Hello, my sewing bees, and welcome to Suki Sews. And on this channel, I provide expert guidance for sewing, machine embroidery, and notion reviews. Now, yes, needles can be a little bit confusing. There's different numbers and colors, and honestly, really, what does all of it mean? But today, I'm gonna to share with you the basics of sewing machine needles, and I'm also going to clear up any of the confusion about what those numbers really do mean. And just for the sake of comparison, I'm gonna be using the Schmetz needles as a point of reference. But the good news is Schmetz needles work on pretty much every machine that's ever been made. So definitely check them out. I'm gonna break this video into six sections. The first are needle parts. The second, type of fabric. Third, five most common needles. Fourth, how often to change. Fifth, troubleshooting and the six will be the needle cheat sheet that you can download for free. Now, I'm really gonna ask as a favor that you don't assume you know everything there is about sewing machine needles and that you listen to every single section. I promise you're gonna learn something new today. All right, well, without further ado, let's start talking about the parts of the needle. Number one are the needle parts, and I've got this big giant needle courtesy of Schmetz needles that we are going to be using as the example to talk about all the different parts. Let's start with the size. On every single sewing machine needle, there will be two sizes, a large one like 80 and a small one like 12. Now the large one is in fact European. In fact, the number comes from the diameter of the blade. So in this case, the 80 size would be a 0.80 millimeter and that's where you get your number 80. Now the small number, there's a lot of misinformation floating around on the internet and on YouTube about this number. A lot of people think that it's the American number or the US. That's simply not the case. What happened was decades ago, all of the different sewing machine needle manufacturers, they had their large number, but to kind of make things consistent and universal, they all agreed on creating this standard number. So this was actually created by the Singer, Asian and International companies, and that, my friends, is where you get that smaller number. So now anytime you see a size 80, which we now know where that number comes from, you will always see the number 12 or 90 is 14, 100 is 16, and so forth. And the size of the needle is designed so that the bigger the number, it's working with heavier fabric. So the smaller the number will be thinner fabric. The next up is the shank. That's that top portion that fits into the needle bar. You'll notice that it's flat on one side and rounded on the other. And the flat side helps it position into the needle bar correctly. The next is the blade. That's that middle shaft section. And remember, that is where you get the size based on the diameter of the blade. So 0.80 millimeters would equal a size 80 needle, which would be an 8012. The next is the groove. This is the part that guides the thread into the eye of the needle. It will change length and width depending on the type of needle. The next is the scarf. That's that little back notch right above the eye of the needle, which picks up the thread from the bobbin hook. This also will change depending on the type of needle. And the last is the point and tip. This is obviously the part that penetrates the fabric, which will form your stitch. And you know what? This also can change depending on the type of needle. Number two, we're gonna talk about the type of fabric. It's really important that you know what type of fabric you are working with, and that's gonna determine which type of needle you're going to use. There are so many types of fabric out there, lots and lots of fabric, but today we're going to narrow it down to two different kinds of fabric. We're gonna narrow it to woven and knits. Now, what is a woven? Well, you probably think of like a quilt cotton. It's a light to medium weight that you would use on quilts and purses and masks. And then the next would be denim, which is, you know, a pair of jeans. <laughs> it's thick and it's heavier. And then of course we have microfiber. This is something that's tightly woven. I always think of dresses and home decor. And the other type is knit. Of course, the first thing you're gonna think of are t-shirts. 
or t-shirt type material. And then of course you can also think of swimwear or activewear. Those are knits. So basically anything that stretches is a knit and anything that doesn't stretch is a woven. Number three are the five most popular needles. Now we're gonna stick with our category of woven and knit, but we're gonna add a little extra, which is the universal needle. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. It is designed to work with pretty much everything as a basic guide. So it'll work with wovens and knits, and you would always wanna try it out first. I mean, why not? It's the universal needle. And because it does have a slight ballpoint, that's what makes it somewhat friendly with knit materials. So always try this before you try any other needle. Now let's get into the woven needles. There's two we're gonna talk about today. The first is the jeans and denim needle. This of course is ideal for denim, but it also works really good on canvas. The idea is that the blade is slightly stronger and the point is a medium ballpoint. The next is the Microtex Sharp Needle. It's designed to work with tightly woven materials like polyester, silks, and even coated materials. The point is sharp and fine for straight stitches. Now let's move on to the knit category. There's gonna be two needles there that we talk about as well. The first and probably the most popular for knits is the Jersey Ballpoint Needle. It is ideal for sewing on pretty much all kinds of knits. And the reason why is because the ballpoint tip doesn't break or damage the material as it's sewing through. And the last of the five most popular needles is the stretch needle. It's designed to work with highly stretchy and elastic -y type knits. It's got a medium ballpoint, but the scarf and eye are designed slightly different to help prevent skip stitches. So if you're working on a knit and the Jersey ballpoint didn't work and definitely the universal didn't work, then chances are the stretch needle is gonna be your savior for the day. Number four, how often to change. It's recommended that you change your needle after every six to eight hours of use. Now I like to compare this to getting an oil change for your car. When you do that every three to 5,000 miles, it's really just preventative maintenance so that you don't damage your car further. And same goes for the needle. I have to share with you the MyPad. This is a really handy little notion that will keep your used sewing machine needles in check. And you'll have an idea of what needle is in your sewing machine because whatever the little flower head pin is pinned into, that's the needle that's in your sewing machine right now. In fact, I have an entire video on this. So you can check that out and learn more about it. And number five is needle troubleshooting. There are five most common reasons why you should check your needle before you get angry at your machine. The first is if you are having a lot of thread breakage. If your thread just keeps breaking and you've re-threaded, there is a really good chance that there's a burr on your needle. It could be bent, there could be a whole series of things, but if you have a lot of thread breakage, just change your needle out. The second is skipped stitches. Now remember earlier I was talking about the stretch needle and how that helps prevent skip stitches on knits. Well, that's the same for any kind of needle. Just make sure you're using the right needle for the right material and the right size and give it a whirl. The third is fabric that's puckering or pulling. Again, this could be because there's a burr on your needle and it's probably most likely that the needle is either the wrong size though or the wrong type or it is simply because the needle is bent. Number four is clicking sounds. Seriously, if you hear a clicking sound in your machine as it's stitching, like it's gonna go click, 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 something like that. Chances are, if you change your needle, it's gonna solve that problem. You also may wanna check that the needle is also at the highest position. So the needle's gotta be perfectly, precisely in the right place for it to go down and pick up the bobbin thread. And of course, if your needle breaks, there is a really good chance that you have the wrong size needle, or it could be something else too, but if your needle breaks, obviously you're going to change it out, and that would be a good opportunity to make sure that you are using your needles only six to eight hours. And number six is the needle cheat sheet. There is a link in the description below that will bring you to my website where you can download this needle cheat sheet and then you can print it off and keep it next to your sewing machine. There's also a link where you can go and check out the behind the brand of Suki Sews. Schmetz Needles did a really nice article on me and I think it's really, it's, it's a fast read. So if you wanna learn more about me and my brand and, and everything there, then check it out. And then lastly, the Schmetz Needles have their needles color coded in addition to the number size. So if you wanna learn more about that, you can also follow the link to bring you right to their website and get their color code cheat sheet. And lastly, 
there is no needle police that goes around the world making sure that you've got the right needle for the right fabric. If it works, go for it. However, I do think it's worth mentioning that some of the beginner and entry level machines have a safety feature that will not allow them to use larger eye needles. It's because they simply don't have the horsepower to go through the material. So the, the machine will begin to make kind of a or kind of a grunting noise. So if your machine's making that kind of a noise, chances are it's just not intended to have enough horsepower to, to sew through that material, even if you have a larger eye needle. Now let me know in the comments below what is one thing that you learned new about sewing machine needles today and go ahead and share this video with a sewing friend so that they can also know all the insides of basics of sewing machine needles. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you are ready to learn more about sewing machine features and benefits and things that are really cool, then check out this video right here where you can learn more about that. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.